If there was one musician whose sound embodies the liberation struggle, it is Jonas Musa Kwangwa. Born in Orlando East, Soweto's first township in 1937, the respected trombonist, composer, arranger, and band leader's music is the soundtrack to the black South African. I come from a musical family. You know, my sister was a concert pianist. But uh, I picked up the trombone. Rather, I was given my first trombone by uh, Trevor Huddleston in St. Peter's Secondary School in 1954. The Huddleston Jazz Band is the same band that gave birth to Hugh Masigela's music career. By the early 1950s, the iconic Kipu Mugenzi brings them on board for the 1959 recording of the Jazz Apostles, South Africa's first LP by a black band. The duo recently came together to perform the music of the historical band with original Apostles member Abdullah Ibrahim. They follow Mugeti on to King Kong, Todd Mashigizu's jazz opera that first tours South Africa before going on to Europe in 1961. From London, it was on to the U.S. where the pair attends New York's Manhattan School of Music through the support of Harry Belafonte and Miriam Mageba. In 1965, Gwangwa features in a Sound of Africa concert at the respected Carnegie Hall with Mageba, Masigela, Kafia Semenya and Le Dambulu. He also arranges the iconic Grammy-winning 1965 album, An Evening with Harry Belafonte and Makeba. Here, performing Hush with Masagela and Semenya at Makeba's funeral, a song they featured on the classic 1970 recording, The Union of South Africa. Continuing to break new ground as a composer and arranger, Wangwa begins his decade-long service with Amanda after a call from the ANC president, O. Artambo. The genesis of the cultural assembly was a presentation of struggle songs. It evolved into a full musical under Gwangwa as a director and went on to be used in lobbying support for liberation movements in exile and stay up international solidarity movements. For his work with Amanda, Gwangwa received a national order in 2010, as he had earlier been recognized with the highest honor for his individual contribution in 1999. A camp vehicle accident seriously injures his leg in the very same place he was hurt in a U.S. accident in the early 70s. The result is his recognizable limp. The increase of regional raids and dead squads by South African security forces in 1980s forces Gwangwa to London after he narrow escapes the bombing. I had that mishap in, in uh, Botswana at the time. It was an ANC house you know, I was living in and uh, everything was blown up. I, I cry more for the pictures and things of my childhood and my parents and things like that. In 1987, the award-winning composer collaborates on the original score and theme song for Richard Anton Bore's Cry Freedom, for which he is nominated for a Grammy, Oscar and a Golden Globes Awards. Wango performs at Nelson Mandela's 70th birthday tribute in Wembley Stadium, his last major performance before returning to South Africa in 1991. Once back, he would throw himself into scoring soundtracks on TV shows such as Generations, Night News, as well as for the documentary Ulibambe Linga Show. He composed a theme song for the Olympic beat. In recent years, Gwangwa has been unwell, going in and out of hospital. Jonas Musa Gwangwa has undoubtedly been an important figure in South African jazz scene for nearly three quarters of a century. And this contribution by a way of his active participation in music owes a lot to the struggle for liberation. <laughs> Bon way.